In this lecture, I will be talking about views on observation. And obviously, the first question is, well, what is observation? Well, we've seen what observation is in a previous lecture on participant observation. Observation means watching, but not only watching. It also means listening. It means feeling. It means smelling, tasting. Um, and some would argue that it's also posing questions. There are some discussions uh, about that. Is observation really also about posing questions or are we interviewing them? So what is observation? Well, observation consists of these uh, senses. It means using your senses. But then what? We need more views and more thought about observation. And in the next few lectures, I'll be discussing these considerations for observations or about observations. For instance, the first one, uh, how do social scientists think about observation as a method? Is it just use your sense or is it more than that? And can you use your sense in different ways? Second consideration for observation is the focus. And um, obviously that is essential because a focus means that you have to select something. And if you select something, you also exclude something. So focus means selection, means exclusion. And that might be an issue, a difficulty, a problem. Um, one lecture will be about writing down your observations. How do you create field notes and how do you organize them or how can you organize them? And the final lecture will be about the question, are observations actually recordings of situations or are observations mere interpretations? Where lies the difference between an observation, an objective observation, if we use epistemology again, and an interpretation, a subjective interpretation? So how do social scientists Think about observation. Um, what are the observational paradigms? Adler and Adler wrote a nice chapter on observational paradigms in sociology. And uh, they make a distinction between five different paradigms. And the first paradigm is the most classic paradigm. It's Simmel's paradigm of formal sociology. And the focus of Simmel was on the forms of social interaction rather than the content. And he was also focusing on social types. So he was describing people as social types in relation to other people. So one example is the stranger. He describes the stranger as someone with certain connections, but a certain distance towards others. And it's striking, this essay on, on um, the stranger, because it relates very much to Simon's personal life and personal situation, which was also a situation that was a bit detached. So as a sociologist, he was a bit of a sociological flaneur, as he's often called. So that's formal sociology on the forms of social interaction. The second paradigm is the dramaturgical sociology of Goffman. And we've seen something about Goffman in one of the previous lectures about impression management. Goffman uses a dramaturgical focus on social life. People play roles, front stage and backstage. Now I'm here in the front stage and when I'm standing here, my cameraman, Auke, would do this and I have to move. That's a backstage movement and I'm moving. But you don't see it because in the front stage it seems as if I'm not doing this on purpose. So, and what we do with this dramaturgical view, we look at how people act and interact and create relationships, that creates meaning. Uh, we create meaning through these interactions. The third uh, observational paradigm is the paradigm of the public realm. And uh, we know now uh, Lynn Loveland because of the, uh, the other lecture outside. Um, and Lynn Loveland, as a student of government, uses his ideas, but focuses more on the city as well as on dealing with private and public. And she does this also in a bit of a detached form, as we will be doing in the assignment. And 
um, this detached form you will not find in auto observation nor in uh, auto ethnography. This form of observation is uh, has the focus not so much on the public realm, not so much on how people play a role, not on the formal parts. No, it focuses on the self. The self as a member of society, participating in society and then describing oneself. The fifth and my personal favorite um, um, uh, observational paradigm is the ethnomethodology. And in ethnomethodology, the focus lies on how do in individuals in interaction create everyday life, create social order. So these are different paradigms of using observation. These are different ways of thinking about observation. That might be a little abstract, and it is abstract. And in other lectures, I will show you something about how to observe. But first, let's take a look at other thinkers other sciences. In the ethology, social biology, Franz de Waal wrote his famous book on chimpanzee politics. And in this book, he writes this. Everyone can look, but actually perceiving is something that has to be learned. This is a constantly recurring problem when new students arrive. For the first few weeks, they see nothing at all. When I explained to them, at the end of an aggressive incident in the colony, that Jeroen rushed up to Mama and slapped her, whereupon Gorilla and Mama joined forces and pursued Jeroen, who sought refuge with Nikki, they look at me as if I'm crazy. And he continues. Whereas to me, this is a superficial summary of a fairly simple interaction. Only four chimpanzees were involved. The students have only seen a few Black beast chaotically running around, charging around, uttering ear-piercing screams. They will probably have missed the hard slap. And Franz de Waal writes about students who stay with him for a couple of weeks. The first few weeks, they don't see anything, he says. And it's fairly simple. It's four beasts chaotically charging around and they missed the hard slap after the first few weeks. And in social biology, there's much more focus on how to observe than often in sociology. We quickly tend to look at imagination, theoretical imagination, analytical imagination. We just know, I just felt it. And that's what you often read in chapters on observation. So maybe we should learn some lessons from the Val. Well, the first lesson for me is this one. The trained eye can see more. It really is an illusion to think that within one, two, three observations, you know how to observe. I'm not such a good observer simply because I didn't train enough. So a trained eye can see more. And there's a second bit we can learn, a second lesson we can learn. Some people know this game. Actually, many people know this game, and I like this game. This is a game of cricket. And it's really hard to understand a test match in cricket that takes five days when you don't know all the rules. And if you know all the rules, then if you know the whole gestalt, the whole situation, the whole of the action, you understand way more than, you under than when you understand just a few of its parts. So the whole of actions is more than just the sum of each individual part of action. 